Hey guys, how's it going? It's Alex of Kaidi Star Astrology. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. This is my new moon in Capricorn solar eclipse video for the new moon on the 25th of December. And yes, it's also an eclipse and eclipses tend to bring in some pretty powerful energies. They serve as these kind of wild card gateways or portals. And if you look back at the cycles of your life, you're likely to find if you're paying attention that eclipses sort of mark these interesting chapters where some pretty powerful things take place. So let's pull up the chart for the new moon and see what kind of energies we can expect. We have the sun and the moon conjunct at four degrees Capricorn. That's our new moon. And then we have Jupiter right nearby there at five degrees. And we know that Jupiter makes everything kind of larger than life. It kind of magnetizes everything. And we have Jupiter conjunct the south node at eight degrees. This is a south node eclipse, so it can bring up issues of the past, karmic retribution, things that the collective needs to let go of, tradition. And then we also have Saturn and Pluto very close to one another at this point. Saturn at 20 degrees and Pluto at 22. They will finally make their conjunction during the next eclipse in early January, which will be my next video. And I did a video, a couple of videos back, and I will put this down in the description box where I talked about the significance of Saturn and Pluto meeting up in Capricorn. Uh, because the last time these two planets saw each other in Capricorn was back in 1518. So this is the closeout of that cycle. And back in that last conjunction in the 1500s, this brought up issues around those in authority abusing their power. And the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in 1518 was in many ways the catalyst for a revolution by the people. We've had some interesting developments in politics recently. So right on schedule, these themes are coming in. And we know by now, if we are students of astrology, that this is a time where the old system is being torn down to be replaced by a new one. We're going to be talking about that a lot in coming weeks and months. So for this video, I really want to focus on how this Capricorn energy is influencing us on a personal level and how that applies to the collective, which I'll get to. But I really want to talk about how it influences us on a personal level. And for one thing, we know that with this much Capricorn, it's hitting all of us in a certain area of our chart. And Saturn is the binding, solidifying, and stabilizing force in the universe. It's the container where the formless takes form, and it represents the boundaries of our manifest reality, essentially the boundaries that we have to work with. So for that reason, Saturn represents the limitations and the obstacles and the, obstacles and the blockages that we can experience when we set a long-term goal, such as a career or buying a house, all of the things that we need to do, the hurdles we need to jump over to get there. So if this is a video game, Saturn is the walls of the labyrinth. It's the guiding force that can definitely block us, but in doing so forces us to evolve, forces us to mature and step into our power and into the wisdom that only comes through facing life's challenges and overcoming them. So here I want to reference the teachings of Paul Foster Case. He talks about in his 12 channels of life expression, he talks about how each of these planets have a specific vibration and a specific role that they play. And it's really all in the way that we feel think about and the way that we approach these energies and how we're going to experience them. So if we're thinking about them negatively, we're going to experience them as their negative polarity. And if we're thinking about them positively, we're going to experience their positive polarity. So the polarity of the negative positive polarity of Saturn is dominion, 
which is sovereignty or control over one's own life, and slavery, feeling so weighed down by the obstacles and the limitations and restrictions of Saturn that we start to see this life as some kind of a prison, or we start to you know, have a very dismal view of this reality, that it's too hard, that it's oppressive, that it's torture. But if we work with Saturn, then we have dominion and control over our own life. Because we start to see how Saturn teaches us discipline and eventually leads to production of results. Without Saturn, this reality would really just be very etheric, very fluid, very malleable. It would be pure energy, like the realms, that, the higher dimensional realms, where everything is light and energy and floating. But here on the third dimensional level, there is a story unfolding. We're dealing with linear time, and there are steps that need to be taken. And because it's an evolutionary process, there are challenges that need to be met and overcome. And that's Saturn. And over the course of this journey, one matures. So Saturn represents stepping into adulthood, stepping into control of one's life, letting go of the false projections and temptations of the ego, becoming a master of one's chosen field or chosen interest. If part of your life purpose is to become a parent, doing that job well, becoming an adult. Saturn is the crone archetype representing the wisdom of age. And here I want to talk about a topic that I absolutely love, and I'm really excited to talk about it. I haven't ever in a video before, and this is the topic of the cycles of evolution that occur within one human life. And from an evolutionary astrology perspective, there are several of these important cycles which serve as initiations for energetic attunement. And the first of these cycles that we encounter on the life journey is the Saturn return. Believe it or not, the Saturn return at 29, 30 years old is really the first major initiation point of significance on the life journey. And there's several after that. Everything up until 2930 is really just the development of the egocentric identity structure, primal wants, primal needs, desires, likes, dislikes, sexual experimentation, adventure. But of course, this part of youth also comes with a fair amount of confusion, heartbreak, accidents. And I know for a lot of us, a fair amount of trauma as well, because I think in part, even if you had what could be considered an ideal upbringing, there's still the whole amnesia part of it where until we awaken we really have no idea where where we are who we are or why we got here which can be pretty traumatizing for the soul i know it was for me so up until the saturn return which is the first time that we even really start to understand our North Node, up until our Saturn return, we're repeating the lessons of our South Node. We're sort of just repeating past life karmic baggage. And then at the Saturn return, we start to come into our life mission. And it's a really interesting process that people have a really hard time with 
because suddenly things that we used to do aren't working anymore or we're not interested in them anymore. And suddenly we want to go in an entirely new direction. And indeed it is because we're going towards our North node. And the process of letting go of our South node is painful. So there's this huge initiation at the age of 30. And we're integrating all of that, I'd say, until about 33. We start to get a little bit more serious about life, where we're going. Things start to matter to us that didn't before. We start to grow up, hopefully, unless we're resisting the cycle, which I'll get to in a bit. And then after the Saturn return, we come into the next major cycle will be our Uranus opposition, which happens at 40 to 43 years old, otherwise known by those who don't know, <laughs> otherwise known as the quote unquote midlife crisis. And what it actually is, is this Uranian energy, Uranus again is Kundalini, it's this Kundalini electrical impulse trying to clear through the chakra channels and pushing all of this density out of the way. So Uranus comes around, and if we're not on our life path by then, we have a sudden urgency to get back on track. So the midlife crisis, as it's known sometimes, is actually someone having a sudden desperate need to either realign with their life mission or cling to a previous cycle, suddenly buy a car, suddenly get out of that marriage, suddenly travel the world, suddenly leave that job. And the real crisis is if we don't want to let go of our youth and we don't want to level up and go on to the next cycle. If we do, if we embrace this evolutionary journey, these are powerful gateways of initiation. And the frequency of our energy raises at this time. This is an energetic attunement. So then after the Uranus return, we have our Chiron return. Our Chiron return at age 50 to 51. This is a really intense time of healing, of confronting some old, old wounds. And the glyph of Chiron is shaped like a key for a reason. Because if we heal these wounds, we unlock these doors. And we can be attuned into some really powerful spiritual gifts at these times, at this time. Psychic abilities, healing abilities. It's another upgrade. At age 81 to 84, we have our Uranus return. And there's some other cycles in between, but I'm just doing the major ones right now. Uranus return, age 81 to 84. Uranus represents the third eye, the Kundalini awakening. This is a time when elders can break through and fully awaken to their full genius and shine in their earned wisdom. This is the archetype of the wisdom keeper, the wise sage, the medicine man, the medicine woman, or the elder that we really don't have very much of in the current paradigm that thankfully is quickly <laughs> and with gaining momentum being torn down. And this is one of the things that we are going to replace by each of us all stepping into our power of where we are on this beautiful journey of life with full trust that creator made each of these cycles just as important as the next. And in this profound period of the early 80s, when we can fully come into our spiritual attunement, 
and then become these profound protectors of ancient wisdom to guide the younger generations. Let me tell you this. We are not supposed to be hunched over, silent, and forgotten about in our old age. The years from 40 until the time that we transition out of these bodies are some of the most important years that we have. Because we've earned wisdom that we simply can't have otherwise. And this knowledge is completely lost in our current world. Our current world with social media, et cetera, is obsessed with youthfulness, which let me be honest with you. I mean, it's all beautiful, but from an astrological perspective, everything up to your Saturn return is like nearly irrelevant and a bit chaotic. You're, you're just figuring out who you are and trying to separate who you are this life from last time with all of its mistakes. After 30 is where it's at. And again, it's all beautiful. And the whole reason for me bringing us up, this up is that because Capricorn is about maturity and stewardship and the elder and the adult, the dissolving of the ego and stepping into a place of pride in production and the joy of achievement. Capricorn is building a world for future generations. It's very selfless, right? It squares Aries. It's the opposite of youth. It's the opposite of cancer. Capricorn in its fullest expression is the heavenly father, the shepherd. Someone who's able to take care of other people because they are in full control and sovereignty of their own life. So working with Saturnian energy is about grasping the reasons for our limitations in this life, grasping the reasons that we go through hardship and struggle. Because if we understand the reasons why this is and we don't battle against Saturn, then we can work with his energy. Saturn is the harvest and the compassionate wisdom of age. So for the alchemist, Saturn is not a malefic, meaning a bad guy. Of course, there is a sense of mourning when one cycle gives way to the next. There is a sense of collective mourning for the things that are happening in the world right now. Of course there is. But when we understand that we are taking our place in the grand tapestry and that each of us is needed for this thing to work and that if we're going to build a new world, it's going to take time and it's going to take effort, then we can really start to understand the beauty and the majesty of the human race. I think that we've lost faith in the human race a little bit. So here's a little side story for you guys. I watched a documentary last night about the Ming Dynasty because I don't I didn't know very much about the Ming Dynasty and I sure do now and I'm going to put the link to this documentary below. Super random, but some of you may be interested. I highly recommend watching this documentary. It totally blew my mind. And what blew my mind about it was how much time and labor this dynasty put towards the construction of its temples, its fortresses, its ships, its art, its palaces. And of course, the Ming dynasty is not the only people that did this, but the construction of the Great Wall of China, for example, took like 200 years to complete. <laughs> These palaces were built 
by basically sounding out the call to the edges of the country and having the best artists of that region to come together and work for years to build these palaces. The Forbidden City, I can't remember how many years it took them to build it, but I mean, the whole thing is carved with this with these beautiful ornate dragons and all of the tiles on the roof are plated with gold with little tiny dragons drawn on them. I mean, it's just the intricacy and the pride in work. And some of the people that worked on these structures must have known that they wouldn't even be alive when they were completed. It's very Capricorn to me. But they came together and they did it some of them died doing it. And these structures, these beautiful structures are still here today. And I just thought as I was watching it, I was like, wow, that is so Capricorn to not only build a palace, but you know, <laughs> the amount of effort that they put into this thing, you know that they were thinking, we're going to build the best palace that's ever existed. Let's gather the best stonemasons. Let's gather the best carvers, the best painters, and all convene in one place and build this masterpiece. So with all of this Saturn energy, the world's in a tight spot. Some of us are in a tight spot. But there's a lot of beauty in this time as well. And again, it's all in how we approach the energy and how we look at it. All right, you guys, thank you so much for tuning into my channel. If you would like to reach out to me for a reading, I will put my website right here as well as down in the description box. And if you want to reach out for a reading during these really powerful eclipses between now and mid-January, I would email me quickly uh, because I'm going to fill up quick kind of like the Super Bowl for an astrologer. It's a lot. It's a lot going on. Uh, but I hope you guys are doing well. And if you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and a share. I really appreciate it. Bye, guys.